One of the best things that we do on our day to day is walk around the beautiful city in which we inhabit. We decompress or we are compressing, depending on the topic of discussion. We get to see the beautiful women. We get to sometimes stop and see our friends who work at local bars, local nightclubs, local businesses, get some free shit because if you don't get free shit, evaluate how you're treating people. Mm. But most importantly, we gain that mental space to think, that change in perspective, that sort of meditative state that walking brings about. Austin, walk us through why our everybody should go for a walk. I see what you did there. Walk us through. You, I, I keep telling y'all this guy's good. Um, so this this started to pick up, especially because this is something that we used to do. Um, Sometimes when we were younger, when we go to like Zilker or something like that, you know, the, the park that's not too far from here, um, walk around, talk about life, see um, the women. And uh, yeah, and sometimes have a cigar, you know, have some beer at the time, all that. So it was a nice little way to take our minds off of what was stressing us and, and worrying our minds and troubling our minds at the time. But since we moved to the same locale, now it's a lot easier for us to just say, hey, let's go for a walk. And given the area which we're in, which is basically downtown, we have the ability to walk by the lake, you know, see more scenic um, environments and whatnot compared to what we were used to doing. And now imagine after a conversation where Someone's telling you, hey, the deadline that you gave us, yeah, um, it's probably going to have to be <laughs> pushed out another week or two. I don't know if I can I can do that or, you know, or something like, hey, the coloring that you originally gave us for your product. Yeah, <laughs> I completely didn't look at the document for that. So I just came up with some shit myself or I didn't even review the day exactly. you, you sent me a document yeah wait what huh huh really so imagine when things like that happen most people would want to get very upset and we definitely understand that but at a certain point most people don't operate from a anger fueling standpoint you can we can but most people can't when most people get frustrated, they kind of just stew in that in that anger and in that frustration and are not productive. So what we found, instead of doing that, because even though we could be fueled off anger, there are certain things that because we can't literally control those people's actions, it's pointless to just sit there and stew in anger. And it could lead to worse outcomes because we could act rash and, and do something that we can't take back and ruin a connection. Instead of doing that, we go outside, we walk around. And it could be one mile, it could be two miles, it could be however many miles where we just walk and talk about all the things that we have to get done and all the things that are are keeping us up at night on, on what we have to get completed and do by a specific deadline. And when we do that, most of the times I would say, we come out of the walk knowing exactly what to do and exactly how to move forward and having more creative insights than when we previously started the walk and we're just sitting inside being upset. So for you all, I recommend if you're stuck on something, if you're pondering something, if something is keeping you up at night, I would suggest that you go out on a walk. Maybe you and a, a friend or confidant or brother or sister who shares in a similar mindset, go out on a walk and see what you can come up with. And I think you'd be very surprised with that particular outcome of that walk. And again, it sounds very simple. It, it sounds very, you know, trivial on, you know, what what the fuck is a walk gonna do? It's just walking. I'm not here brainstorming shit on a whiteboard and whatnot. And there are times for that. 
where that is very lucrative. But I think you'd also be very surprised with the walk. Ryan Holiday references a quote from Nietzsche, which is only those thoughts that come by walking have any value. It's a very interesting perspective. And one of the reasons why Ryan Holiday uses this quote and how he supports it is when you walk, you enter a sort of meditative state. Now, it's almost like self-hypnosis because what's happening is rather than focusing on your actions or being cognizant of walking, moving, typing an email, talking to somebody, your body language, you fall into this sort of hypnotic rhythm when you walk. Your brain just kind of goes into autopilot, at least in terms of controlling your body. And so that actually frees up some mental bandwidth so you can start thinking. And in a way, it's like a survival mechanism. Because if you think about evolution, from the evolutionary perspective, if you are incapable of thinking while you're walking, then you're obviously not going to be able to adapt to oncoming scenarios or to scenarios that you are trying to get away from. So when you're stationary, it might be more important to focus on exactly what's going on in your immediate surroundings. But when, say, you're booking it, right? You're in a fight or flight response. What you're actually doing is processing, okay, where am I going? What's my next move? What's the next best play? How do I set this up tactically or strategically depending on the scenario? So what I'm trying to say is going for a walk is almost a way like, like doping yourself to actually think in a more creative way. It's a way of actually clearing up your mental bandwidth. And I do think that it also allows you to see new scenery. There's a reason why people always recommend that when you're young, you travel the world a lot. Mm. And I'm not saying going to another country to find yourself, because we all know if you are an attractive female, you will find yourself fill in the blank. Now, what they mean to say is that you need to travel so that you can experience new things. So you can see how other countries are set up, how other communities communicate, how foreign businesses operate. There's things that you would never, ever think about. I guarantee if you're based in America or if you're based in a first world country that you likely don't know how fruits are grown, processed and exported from a foreign country, say a Latin American country or a country in Africa. You likely don't know. And that's not for lack of inability to learn. It's just lack of, I'll say, priority. It was never a priority, nor is it potentially a priority for you now. But when you start experiencing those things and seeing how certain things operate, your brain starts incorporating new things into your thought process. So if you see the supply chain of fruits and you're developing a business and you're like, hey, I can apply the supply chain to my product, which is being manufactured in Vietnam, and I want to bring it here in XYZ, and there's components here and there, you start connecting two and two together. So those experiences, when you're going for a walk, you see certain people react a certain way, or you see a, a pop-up business that's new, or you talk to a random stranger, or you just see a different building, a change mm. in perspective sometimes. You just see a color, right? That building's green and blue. Why aren't we arguing yellow and blue? That green and blue looks pretty nice. <laughs> Bam! You consolidate your ideas. That's very true, because there's certain things where we might have taken um, observation of what we've seen around us to do certain things because now when we go places because of the the realm that we're in now and the mind state that we're in now we can't just walk places and enjoy the place for what it is i would say and i'm not saying that in a negative way i'm saying if we go to we literally did this we went to a um a brunch spot that we used to frequent and went there and we noticed that though they have good food and the ambiance is decent they were horrible at moving customers in and out which caused the potential customers to wait outside for long periods of time which i would say even though we stayed i would say could lose them a large amount of customers or potential customers and a large amount of money 
Well, we already agreed to never go there again, so they did lose us. There you go. So <laughs> we noticed things like that that we didn't notice before because we go out and we we take a walk and just observe these things. And I want to get into the, the science behind it. So this is from the BYU College of Sciences. So if I say anything that you disagree with from, from here on, you can contact BYU and tell me um, how... They respond, but <laughs> and and mind you, after you go for a walk and think there about actually think Doing about it. what's being said exactly right, and so Jose, you you know very well, even though you haven't had it recently, the runner's high that you can get because his knees are fucked up, Definitely. but the runner's high, my, my fault, the runner's high that you can get. When you're on a long run, especially running down down here with the scenic views and, you know, the beautiful women jogging and, and walking by and stuff like that, you get a high. And then the thoughts that you can come up with are just seem to be so much more of value than ones that you might just be, you know, producing when you're just sitting there and stewing and like, I don't know watching some anime or something. and nothing's wrong with anime we love anime but i'm just saying the quality of thought that your brain produces seems to be that much better when you have like a after runner's high or something like that so the phenomenon most commonly known as runner's high is another stress-related benefit of exercise and working out stimulates the release of endorphins that act on opiate receptors in the brain to create the blissful feeling of a workout high and when you have this feeling again to all the stress that you go through on a day to day it basically lowers it or depletes it because now your brain is being fed more oxygen which basically makes it work better so it's like imagine a engine in order for an engine to produce and work even better it has to have an influx of oxygen and that's why on some um cars you'll see like a big kind of vent thing on the top of the hood and shit like that and that's why sports cars are so aerodynamic and they have little pockets and slits open for air to flow in so not only can it go to the engine to you know expedite and increase the productivity of the engine but also to cool certain things like cool the brakes cool the engine just stuff like that so it's like the same thing with your brain when you have more oxygen flowing to it it almost is like you know nitrous to a car it, it, it increases the output and the things that you're able to produce and the speed in which you're able to work with so exercise feeds the brain in order to you know do better and think better and also exercise secures priceless priceless memories as well is what they say here so you know when you exercise there's certain things that we may forget on a day-to-day -day, certain things that we might have just talked about because there's so much flowing through our head at one point in time but when you exercise it increases the amount that you're able to retain memory wise and when you're sharp like that we all know the benefit of being sharp, especially in conversations with people who are sharp themselves and have their own shit going on, because there's certain things like, hey, look, um, what's in, what's in your cigar again? And then imagine if you forget at that point in time and you have a. Speaking of endorphins, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> speaking of runners high, hey, I'm about to, I'm about to go for a run right now. I'm to go fuck my knees up yeah, right now. But um, so and imagine, imagine if I forgot what I was just talking about. But because we exercise and because we we keep um, our bodies in such good shape and and whatnot, we're able to remember and figure out things just like that. So imagine you're sitting in front of someone who you're in a negotiation with or you want them to buy your product and you forget the details on your product. That's a, a horrible perspective for a sales rep. Because even imagine, even if you have a good product, now that you don't remember the the details, it's just going to make you and your product look subpar. 
So when you exercise and go for walks and things of that nature and get that oxygen to your brain, you allow yourself to operate at a higher level. And you won't forget things like that, which in those times are crucial because we've been in situations where um, somebody would be talking to us and they ask us a question or even they may not ask us a question. We might just want to detail um, the specifics of our products and then we recall it just like that. And then they're like, wow, I never knew that. You guys really know your stuff. I didn't know all those things were a part of the the product that you have here. And I didn't know that, you know, that makes this type of experience when you use it and, and blah, blah, blah. So having that oxygen go to your brain from fucking being able to get your ass up and move is so, so important. There's a lot of things that I want to say, but I feel like a good portion of everything's on tangent. So I'm not going to go down those tangent routes. <laughs> what I will say is if I were to break it down, the reason why we recommend that you go for a walk, it's not necessarily for just the health benefits. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily just for the change of scenery. The majority of the benefit that we're discussing is mental. Going for a walk helps you mentally. Correct. It keeps you mentally sharp. It helps you stay mentally fresh. It helps you refresh your brain. And it also helps you just operate in a more optimal manner, which anybody and everybody can gain from performing better mentally. If you have brain fog or you've mm. ever had brain fog, you already know how much of a difference that makes. And if something as simple as going for a quick 10 minute walk, and you don't have to be in a, in a scenic or luxurious area, it's just a walk at that just the action itself and preferably outside because there's a certain part of the human brain that responds to moving peripherals mm. i forgot the actual anomaly but it's something like it it's, it has a very high release of dopamine and endorphins so in other words going for a walk itself and just seeing your peripherals move that's that's why it feels so good to drive and i could see why because imagine how things were back in, you know, when we had to fucking hunt and shit like that. Having that peripheral view for anything that fucking moves is like now your brain's like has to be very perceptive to that. So I could see how that could make you have those responses now because that's kind of it was beneficial mm -hmm. to have that back then. Yeah, it's a definitely an evolved trait. Mm -hmm. But that's why, you know, it's, it's easy to get stuck in the house it's easy to have to try to start your own business as a side hustle and then you're just in the house or you're at work or what have you or you work from home and then you f just flip to a different computer to do whatever you're doing it's easy to get caught up watching anime it's easy to get caught up reading books it's easy to get caught up on dating apps it could it's easy to get caught up on anything nowadays because everything is designed to be so addictive and, mm. and pull our time but if you can or if you can't Make it so that you can go for a walk outside. Right. Five, ten minutes, two, three times a day. And it's actually best to do it after a meal because if you go for a walk, rather than, so when you eat, you mm. get a huge, especially if you're eating carbs, you get a huge spike oh. in glucose, which is going to affect your insulin levels depending on how much carbs you're eating. So even if you feel sluggish or tired after eating, you should go for a five to 10 minute walk because what's happening is that free glucose that's going into your bloodstream gets pulled into your muscles. So in other words, your glucose levels don't spike mm. and, and your insulin level doesn't have to spike. Because the problem is if you continuously spike your insulin level, you become pre-diabetic because your body becomes less responsive to the glucose. See, you learn something new every day. And I want to end on this. And this is going to be less, less serious of a phrase, but it means a lot. Yes. Basically, that's basically. So really? listen, listen, listen. Oh, I so, like where this is. So what I was going to say was get off your ass and touch grass. So a lot of the elders especially in the black community, they're like, you know, go touch grass. Yeah. And when they say that, they mean like, go outside, get off your fucking phone, get off your computer, go outside and touch grass, touch earth, walk, 
be outside with nature, be outside with the birds, like the birds up here. I know y'all can't see them and shit like that, but we have some birds that, you know, that they'll fuck with us. And, you know, go out, smell the air. Just go touch grass. Like a lot of things happen outside that you may not even know exists. And it's all because you want to allow yourself to go touch earth, to go be out with the rest of society outside. And when you put yourself outside and when you put yourself on the grass and things of that nature, you allow yourself a wider array of opportunity and, and I don't want to say luck, but let's just say opportunity that can happen to you because I know this. I told this one person that they were staying inside too much mm. and that nobody was going to know that they even fucking existed if they just stayed inside. Like you have social media, that's cool, but nobody really knows who you are and if you exist, if you're inside all day. So if you want to have anything of value increase in your life, in my opinion, put yourself outside, walk around, meet people, do things, experience life. And I guarantee you that when the final days come for you and I, you will be much happier with the fact that you decided to take a walk as opposed to sit on your ass, touch grass instead of not go out and chase Nyash. No, I'm just joking. But you know what I'm saying? Go out, experience life, and take a walk. The M Club Podcast. Signing out. Mike, mic check. The AM Club Podcast.